1.1 reads as follows. Name two features of the expansionary phase in the in the business cycles. So now, um, what do we mean by, by expansionary phase? So now, guys, uh, and this expansionary phase, it means expansionary phase, now the economy is taking off from the trough. It is now taking off from performing poor. The activity, economic activities have been performing poor. Now they are what? They are taking off from performing poor towards uh, performing better or towards um, uh, performing uh, towards um, the boom. Okay, right. Great talks. So now here what um, we know here, the features can be an increase in, B, in what? In GDP or gross um, domestic uh, product. Increase. Same that here. Increase in gross domestic product. What are these? What what do you mean by this gross domestic product? Now this is the second time coming across this uh, uh, phrase or this uh, abbreviation. Sorry. Um, what does it mean? It it means gross domestic product. Gross domestic product. We check what we check. Um. Uh, 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 the total monetary value of goods and services that have been produced within borders of a certain country, then usually we check the time period of uh, a year. Okay, right. So now again, we can we can say what uh, we can also say we have an increase in spending. But if you check, the question says that we should only give um, one point, and of which that um, uh, one point um, it does what it does um, call for uh, for two marks. So, so now let's check. So also here we can say that we have what? We have inflation increase. Inflation increase. Okay, right, great terms. What do we mean by inflation? And inflation we refer to persistent or continuous increase in the general price level of goods and um, services. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follow. Why is uh, uh, parliamentary uh, questioning on the main um, budget uh, import so important? It is so important because it helps improve um, government policies, uh, legislation, and public um, services. We are saying that this is important because it helps. It helps improve it helps to improve government policies or governmental policies government policies legislations and public services Okay, great talks. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to uh, the next question, which is question uh, 2.2. So question 2.2 um, reads um, as follows. Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So this is an example of a circular flow model. So circular flow model, if you check under circular flow model, uh, we have um, we have what? We have um, vector market. Remember, I said the market is a platform where goods um, where, where goods and services are being bought and sold, that is a market. But now, when it comes to vector market, vector market, it means now this is, is the platform where vectors of production are being bought and sold. Which vectors of production are we actually referring to? We are referring to capital, meaning here capital is being what? Being sold and bought. Also, we refer to entrepreneurship. Also, we refer to um, land. Also, we refer to, to labor. And also we have the households. What do we mean by household? Households, we refer to one person or group of individuals who are sharing the same um, living arrangement. So now here we have product market. Product market, remember, it's a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So here we have the firms. What do we mean by firms? Firms, we refer to an entities that have, that, an entities that are uh, being established with the aim of um, making profit. So now uh, let's check um, the government. The government normally, uh, we refer to we refer to bodies that normally provide with um public good. Why am I saying bodies? Because the government comprises of different set of bodies. Under government, I know most of our uh, Ukraine talks. You think when you talk of the government, we only refer to politicians. Politicians 
uh, they are one of the bodies that would form what do you call the government. Meaning under government, number one, we have politicians. Number two, we have um, societies. We, have, we also have bureaucrats under, under government. They also take part as the government. But in most cases, because the politicians are the ones who are occupying the driver's seat of this vehicle or this um, government, we think that when we talk of the government, we refer to them. No, actually not. We have different set of bodies. Okay, let's check grade 12. So now we have financial institutions. <clears throat> financial institutions that we refer to, we refer to those um, institutions that are actually uh, credit um, providers. So these ones, there are those ones who are dealing with money. These are the businesses um, uh, or institutions that deal with um, money, such as banks and um, uh, the likes, the insurances and um, the like. Okay, right. So now, great talks. Um, let's, as I said earlier, that um, when when we talk of this, um, when we talk of um, of, of of this um, uh, 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 what uh, circular flow model, and then I said the outside part represent the real flow, while the inside part the inside part um, represent what it represent um, the money flow. So now here, remember, uh, we are saying that the households they are the primary what they are the primary uh, participants under the circular flow model because they are the ones normally who are selling what who are selling um uh, the vectors of production to businesses so now businesses can be in the position to produce goods and and services so whenever the households sell their vectors of production to businesses uh, businesses then in that regard they are going to what uh, they are going to reward or compensate the households with an income okay right so now let's um move on uh great talks so great talks uh, moving on, we have 2.2.1. So now 2.2.1 reads as follows. Identify the participant that uses the vectors of production to produce goods and services. Great terms, remember I said that whenever you're dealing with the questions under um, economics or under any, any, any paper, it, it can be economics, it can be business studies and the likes. Make sure when the question says identify, this action verb should be taken into account. The moment it says identify, the expectation is just to pick the answer from the given set of uh, diagram or to pick the answer from the given set of uh, cartoon or to pick the answer from the given set of a uh, scenario. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be firms. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question, you have 2.2.2. So now 2.2.2 reads as follows. Uh, through which market uh, will goods and um, payment for goods and services uh, do flow. They do flow under that what we call the product market. Remember, I've already explained uh, uh, this um, product market. I say product market is a market where goods and services are being bought and sold. Okay, right. So now let's uh, move on to the next question, which is um, uh, 2.2.3. Briefly describe the term goods market. So now goods market, remember goods market uh, is more or less the same with the product market. So meaning here under goods market, we specifically refer to what? Refer to those tangible items that businesses are selling. So now here we talk of the platform where buyers and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. So we hear, uh, we're actually saying that uh, this is a platform, a platform, platform where buyers, and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have um uh, 2.2.4. And our 2.2.4 reads as follows. How does the government reuse economic activities in the circular flow? So remember, these economic activities and the economics, I told you that we check the, the level of employment, we also check if businesses are making profit, we also check the performance of the uh, what imports, also check the performance of the exports, also check 
the level of consumption by the household? Are they able to buy goods and services? Are they not poor? Are they poor? And um, the likes. We also check the different set of investments. Either it can be local investment or foreign investment. So those are the economic activities that you're actually referring to. So what about the secular flow? The secular flow, we check the flow of income. We also check the flow of what? Expenditures. We also check um, the flow of production. That is actually taking place amongst uh, the different set of market um, participants or decision makers. Okay, right. So now in this regard, um, the question wants us to, to, what, to check or take into account how the government reuse economic activities in the circular flow model. So in this regard, um, the government normally, um, they put what you call uh, the surplus that will lead to less spending in the economy. So now here we're saying that uh, the government, the government budget surplus that will lead to lose spending in the economy. In the economy. Okay, right, good talks. So now at this uh, Janja, uh, we have actually pushed so now let's move on to 2.2.5. 2.2.5 uh, reads as follows. Explain the impact on the circular flow if leakages are greater than injections. What do we mean by leakages? When we talk of the leakages, we check uh, the goods and services or we check uh, the outflow of money, the outflow of money, the money that um, goes out of the, uh, the pool of collection. Then when you talk of the injections, we check um, the inflow of money or the money that comes into the economy. Okay, right. So now um, the question says what uh, we want um, to give the impact. So now if the question says impact, let's remember we can either uh, take into account the bad side or the, the good side. So now here the max allocation is four. It means that uh, the expectation is to come up with two points. So now leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Why are we saying that? Because when you talk of the leakages, we refer to uh, the flow of money uh, that is going out of the economy. Meaning leakages, we refer to what outflow of money. That is why we are saying that leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Leakages... Leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Okay, right. So now since we have our four marks, the expectation is to come up with um, how many marks, how many points points. So now, also we can say there will be less funds available for economy, economic activities, which um, leads to national income decreasing. What do you mean by national income? That is an income for the country. So now we are saying that there will be there will be less funds available for economic activities which leads to national income Decrease. Okay, great talk. So now we are done with um, <clears throat> 2.2.5. So now let's move on to the next question. And the next question that we are faced with, we are faced with um, uh, question 2.3. Um, uh, oh, so now question 2.3, I love it with all my heart because um, it addresses um, the issue of what we call Forex. 
So study um, the graph below and answer the questions uh, that um, follow. So now, guys, remember, you, you should be in the position to understand the graph. You should, the, the language should always be clear. So now, in this regard, when we talk of the exchange rate, exchange rate, we check uh, what you check the matching of different set of uh, currencies. So now, in this regard, it means that now uh, a rand is actually being matched with a, with a dollar. So now, if a rand is being matched with a dollar, uh, then uh, we can actually uh, read and understand uh, the questions um, that follow. So now, if we check, um, uh, we have uh, what we have um, a different set of diagrams there or different set of caves. So now, this cave, this one that is um, upward sloping, it's a supply cave. And why is the supply cave upward sloping? The supply cave is upward sloping, sloping because it obeys the law of supply. What does the law of supply uh, stay? The law of supply states that um, the higher the price and then also uh, the higher the quantity. That's the law of um, supply. But now uh, this diagram, I mean, or this graph that is facing down, we call it demand cave. And then the demand cave uh, is downward sloping. Why is it downward sloping? Because there is uh, what an inverse relationship between uh, demand and um, the price. So meaning here, uh, if the prices uh, of goods and services or the prices of a dollar is, is high, then it means um, uh, the quantity is going to be low. But if the price is low, then uh, the quantity is going to be high, unlike the supply. The supply, if the price is high, also the quantity is going to be very high according to the law. Okay, okay, right. Surely grade 12, you did understand me very well when I was addressing these laws because I know most of you grade 12s, uh, you, you, you normally miss a point because you don't understand how this um, uh, concept normally uh, uh, flow or operate. So I said that the supply curve is upward sloping because it does obey uh, the what? The law of supply. And the law of supply states that there is a positive relationship between the price and the quantity. The, the, if the price is high, also the quantity is going to be high. Then reverses the case. But now when it comes to uh, demand curve, demand curve is down and sloping because it obeys the law of demand. What does the law of demand say? The law of demand says that um, uh, there is an inverse or negative relationship between the price as well as the quantity. If the price is high, then the quantity is going to be low. Then if the price is low, then the quantity is going to be high. So that is why uh, we actually uh, see the graphs um, behaving the way they behave. So now if we check the demand curve, we have uh, D, which is the first demand curve, and the second demand curve, we have D1. So it means they say, what? There is a rightward shift, meaning demand, has, demand curve has shifted from D to D1. There should be a reason for a demand curve to shift what, what can be the influence? There are different set of influences that can make um, the demand curve um, to shift. Okay, right. So now uh, let's check the first question that goes, uh, which is uh, 2.3.1. Name one exchange rate um, a system. Remember, guys, we know uh, we have uh, different uh, types of um, exchange um, rate system. We have the exchange rate system where it is actually being managed, meaning we have managed exchange rate system. We also have what? Fixed floating, uh, I mean free floating exchange rate system. We also have fixed managed um, exchange rate um, system. Okay, right. So now we're actually saying that um, uh, we have one. So now one we can just select from the three that I gave. So we can just say, okay, let's take what? Let's take managed. Managed exchange rate system. So, okay, right, great talks. Remember I said we have, um, we have three types here. We have managed exchange rate system. We have free floating exchange rate system. We also have fixed managed exchange rate system. Okay, right. So now, great talks, let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follow. 2.3.2. Give one reason for the shift of the demand curve above. Demand curve can, can shift because there is an increase in terms of payments uh, from uh, imports of goods are uh, from the United States of America. Also, it can shift because there is an increase uh, for payments uh, when it comes to services uh, from United States of America. Also, you can actually say that uh, there is increased uh, spending of South Africa tourists in the United States of um, America. And also, you can actually say that South Africans uh, buying shares in the United States of um, America actually increase. Okay, right. 
So now, since we have um, one point here, uh, we can just uh, say that um, we have increased increased payments for services from the United States of America. Why United States of America? Because a dollar in most cases, it does um, come from or belong to uh, the United States of America. Is this a currency for United States of America? So now, why are we saying South Africa? It is because Iran also is a currency for uh, South Africa. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question that reads 2.3.3. Uh, uh, briefly describe the term foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is the conversion of one currency or one uh, country's currency into another. So now we are saying that um, this is um, the conversion, saying that this is nothing but the conversion. This is the conversion. Conversion of one currency of one country's currency into another. Okay, great job. So now we are done with this uh, question. Let's move on to the next one, which is 2.3.4. Explain the value of the rent against the dollar after shift in the demand curve in the graph um, above. So now, if we check the graph above, we should, uh, we should um, uh, check the graph above. The question says that um, we must what, explain the value of the rent against the, the value uh, of the dollar after the shift in the, in the, um, in the graph um, above. So if we check there, we have the rent, and the rent has actually decreased in the value against the dollar. And also the rent has depreciated against him the dollar. So in this regard, we are saying that um, we have what? We have the rent has decreased in value against the dollar. against the dollar. Let's check. So now here we have what? We have um, rent and then we have rent here. It means now rent is going, it's now weak. It's now weak. It needs, we need more of the rents now to buy a dollar. That is why we are saying that a rent has what? Rent has um, actually depreciated because now if we used to buy uh, one dollar with um, fifteen rand twenty cent, then now after the shift we are now forced to buy it with um, fifteen fifty. It means that now rand is weak. We need more of the rents to buy one dollar. That's what it means. Okay, right, great jobs. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have what? The next question we have um, uh, two point three point five. Two point three point five reads as follows. How can an, an appreciation of a currency be negative to a country? What do we mean by appreciation? Appreciation is when uh, a currency uh, gain value or become more stronger compared to other um, currency. So now uh, let's check uh, the points. We are expected to give um, uh, two points. So it means that currency appreciation may increase export expenses. And also this situation can drastically cause a country's um, gross domestic product to actually decrease. So now we are saying that um, here, we are saying that um, the currency appreciation the currency appreciation may increase Export 
expenses. And also we said that this situation can drastically drastically cause a country's GDP to decrease. Okay, right. Great toss. Okay, right, great toss. So now uh, let's move on to uh what long long questions. We have what we have um uh question uh question um 2.4 2 uh, says, briefly discuss the trend line and extrapolation as features used in the forecasting of the business cycle. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's check here. What do we mean by, by, by the trend line? What do we mean by extrapolation? What do we mean by forecasting? Hey, forecasting is when um, we predict about um, the future. We predict about future future economic activities. We predict. We check how uh, future uh, activities are going to behave. Okay. So now uh, we check of the extrapolation. So now, what, what, what do you mean by extrapolation? Extrapolation is when now this prediction it is used uh, based on what based on the historical uh, data. So now we also have um, the trend line and where the trend line normally uh, indicate the general direction of um, the economy. Okay, right. So now we are saying that um, uh, the trend line, the trend line trend line indicate does indicate a general <coughs> direction of the country's economy. And also the trend line, most countries Have a positive slope over over time, indicating a growing economy. Okay, great tops. So now let's move on to extrapolation. Extra extrapolation. Remember, we said that extrapolation means to estimate future events. from history data or non data oh you're right and also this extrapolation plays a role role players use Extrapolation to make predictions about the economy that are based 
on data and not opinion. Okay, right. So at, at, at this general grade 12, now we have answered the question uh, regarding the extrapolation as well as the trend line. Okay, right. So another another thing, this uh, trend line in most cases, uh, it, it does uh, measure uh, the long-term um, uh, economic uh, growth. What do you mean by economic growth? Economic growth, we check the improvement uh, of businesses in terms of production of goods and uh, services. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 2.5 grade 12. It reads as follows. How can efficiency of inputs be used in the supply side policies so as to improve uh, the economy? What do you mean by efficiency under economics? Under economics, when you talk of efficiency, uh, we check um, what um, the non-wastage of resources. Resources are fully employed. There's no waste of um, resources. So the inputs that we are referring to in this regard, we are referring to the vectors of production. Because now, vectors of production, they are called vectors of production because those are the inputs that are necessarily needed by businesses so as to produce goods and services. Okay, right. So it means that uh, vectors of production, they are the core engine of um, businesses because we found vectors of production, no processing of goods or manufacturing of goods and services can actually uh, take place. Okay, right. So now uh, let us uh, uh, read and continue. So now we are saying that uh, how can efficiency of inputs be used in the supply side policies to improve the um, economy? So now inputs refer to all the costs involved in the production of goods and services. So when inputs are used more efficiently, the production cost of the producers will decrease. And also when we check tests, must be fair for businesses to be encouraged to produce high levels of production. So as well, individuals become motivated to work when taxes are fair, which could lead to higher productivity levels. Productivity levels are referred to individual production of goods and uh, services. Okay, right, great job. So now we're saying that um, the inputs Saying that inputs refer to all the costs involved in the <coughs> in the production. of goods and services. Okay, right. So now secondly, said that when inputs, remember these inputs, we refer to vectors of production. When inputs are used more efficiently, The production cost of the producers will decrease. Oh, you're right, great jobs. So now also we're saying that taxes must be fair. For businesses to be encouraged to produce higher levels of production. Also, we said that individual income motivated individual become motivated to work. Why? Because now the tax charge is, is low. When taxes 
are fair. Meaning the level or the percentage is not that much. And which could lead to higher Little higher 